Hey there, and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossman. Joining me today is a good friend of mine. She's an obvious rock star. With uh, apologies to my buddy, Bill Petrie, I'm going to call her the commander of Common Skew. Actually, she's, <laughs> she's actually the CEO of Common Skew. Catherine Graham, thanks for joining me. It is always a pleasure, Kirby, and it's so nice to see your face. <laughs> right back at you. Can't wait to do this in person, but yes. But uh, for now, I will say I do love the ability to at least do this, so it's really exactly. Cool. <laughs> well, well, I want to jump in. I I, I kind of wanted to do some questions on like uh, getting to know Catherine Graham. So I've got uh, yeah <laughs> several several questions lined up. So I want to start with this one. What's something that you're working on right now that has you totally fired up and about and why? So right after this, we are doing our Q2 launch as, as a company, okay. uh, which is always interesting to do these things uh, virtually now that mm -hmm. uh, we can't get together right. in person. Uh, but this is the time when we review um, so that each of the kind of areas present what their OKRs are. So objectives and key results for those right. that might not know kind of what OKRs are. Mm -hmm. So that's what we use to kind of organize and prioritize what we do, you know, as a company to make sure that there's alignment um, across all the different functions. So the teams present um, to the whole company kind of what their OKRs are for Q2. And then we have fun. We've got a snack tasting organized for this right. afternoon. Love <laughs> and, it, love it. And we'll, we'll play a game. So it's, uh, it's always a nice kind of regroup um, as a quarter, but I'm fired up because I just see, I see kind of the next phase coming of okay. recovery and it feels as if, you know, the economy is picking up steam, the industry is picking up steam. And yeah. I just think there's, it's just such an exciting time to be in the business right now. I actually totally agree. Really quickly, OKRs, I, I've read that book. What's the book Me called? Measure What Matters by that's John Doerr. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's a, that was a powerful book. And so when you, when you mentioned OKRs, I'm like, I, I've heard of that before. So um, that's cool. It's interesting to me that, you know, I think like the quarterly reporting or whatever uh, might not in some organizations be the thing where, that everybody's looking forward to. And it was fun, but it's cool yeah. to me that, that that's sort of what you, your attitude about it is. <laughs> I think it's just what I love about it is that it creates kind of great alignment. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone's just, everyone's fired up about the fact that we're singing from the same song sheet kind of for yeah. the next quarter and we're excited and we're clear on what our goals are and we've got a path to get there. And it's, uh, that's what's, what's fun about it. Yeah. And you get an ability to celebrate each other's success too, especially if you're rowing that boat in the same direction. I want to throw as many cliches out there as possible. Um, <laughs> so, um, so what's, what's something I'm curious that you recommend people start doing today to make their life or their business better? walks at lunchtime listening to a podcast nice okay so uh, that's very specific but yeah, what i will say is having um before covid i had never worked from home mm -hmm. and so i would always walk to the office we're lucky enough to be within walking distance from the office and okay. so without kind of that you know morning and afternoon walk home i had to completely like readjust where i was kind of carving at that time just to a kind of you know get get out and get some fresh air but also to me uh, listening to podcasts is how it is that I work on the business instead of in the business. Mm -hmm. And so if you can kind of come back refreshed after getting some fresh air at lunchtime, I mean, often that early afternoon can be a bit of a slump, like a post lunch, I'm right. kind of tired, you know, and yeah. may not feel as motivated to, to kind of work on some of the hard stuff that um, taking that kind of break and a, um, just getting a bit of a fresh perspective and having carved out that time to be thinking more strategically or to listen to something that's completely different than your day to day that might kind of make you bring different ideas together that it, uh, it's just a good, good combination of, of a win-win of being able to come back refreshed and excited and hopefully with some great new ideas. That's so interesting. I was, I, it's funny. I was, my follow-up question was going to be what kind of podcast do you listen to? Cause it, the great news is there's so many now. I mean, everything from, you know, fiction to, you know, to, to uh, building your business to whatever. So, uh, so, so you kind of like to go outside of what you're normally working on to inspire you. I would say it's a combination of both. Like sometimes I'll listen to like super tactical, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a, a, post, um, a podcast called Saster, which is specifically for, you know, software as a service technology mm -hmm. companies. And so there's lots of, you know, very tactical things kind of within that podcast that I'll listen to. But um, otherwise, I'll sometimes, you know, just listen to deep dives about specific companies that have nothing to do with our industry, yeah. but just listening to how it is that they're thinking about, you know, tackling a problem or looking at their 
their kind of, you know, industry that it's, uh, I always find that there's super interesting learnings that you kind of weave back into your own challenges. Yeah, I agree. And for me, it depends on my mood. Like, like for sure. Yeah, there are times where I'm like, you know what? I just need to hear somebody rah, rah. I, yeah, you know, totally. I just need totally. somebody fire me up. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Okay. So I'm curious about this one. What's another organization or creator? This is a bit of just to set the table, this is something that I've been asking a lot of people because I think it's just interesting to see what other people are doing. So what's another organization or creator or business that's doing good work that you are impressed with and why? So you might laugh at this because it feels as if it's a bit of a meme, but I got to say Peloton. (laughs) Okay. All right. Oh yeah. I get that. So we, uh, that was our family Christmas present this year was oh, okay. Peloton. And um, I have never been a kind of stationary biking person. Mm-hmm. I've never been someone who rides a lot, like more kind of a, as you know, a runner and a hockey player. And yeah. so, you know, I didn't quite know exactly how this would go, but <laughs> I gotta say, I'm on that bike most mornings at 7 a.m. and totally motivated and dialed in and super excited about it. And wow. I think to me, the part that's been like so interesting beyond just, you know, the, the health aspects and, you know, fitness and all those kinds of things, it's what it is that they do in terms of their user interface and their instructors and the data and how it is that they kind of draw you in and get you mm. motivated and get Gamified. you excited. Totally. And I just think that part is so interesting to make me want to continue to get back on kind of every morning. And mm-hmm. I think that the, there's just so much learning that, that we can have from that as far as how it is like our own, you know, sales organizations, mm-hmm. um, you know, how it is we think about kind of data and, um, and how it is that we think about inspiration. So yeah, yeah super, super inspired by what they're doing. I love that. And, and you know, I think anytime you can create, I, I love the term gamify, right? Because it's funny, nobody had to, at least when I was growing up, nobody had to tell me to go play games because they were just fun. And so I did stuff that kept me in shape or whatever it was. And so as adults, anything we can do that makes us fun or makes it fun for us to do the thing we know we should be doing anyway, <laughs> that is, that's brilliant psychology is what that that's is. That's exactly it. They makes, it makes like working hard fun. Yeah. And I think that's the piece kind of that, you know, you push yourself harder, I guess, as a result of that. And, and I think it's just, it's, it's fascinating kind of how it is that they, they just create that entire experience and get you excited. We were talking to, um, you know, Nate Bailey of uh, ideation about this and he's been big into Peloton. There's a, a specific instructor called Alex Toussaint, who I, I laugh because he's the guy who will come on and, and say things like, you know, I'm going to kick your ass with a smile on my face or, you know, <laughs> you didn't get up this morning to get 70 percent like he's just one of those people that kind of fires you up yeah and Nate, Nate was saying that you know he's had his best sales year ever like and he partially attributes that just to the overall impact of of you know riding with this mm. with Alex Toussaint has been super you know inspirational mm. for him so I think that there's just so many interesting analogies in terms of how it kind of applies to to your everyday life oh yeah it's funny you've probably heard this you and I've probably talked about this I I compare content marketing and social media to fitness all the time right and so sales, it all relates because it's like so many people go hard at it for about a week and they don't see any results and they're sore and they're tired and they don't look, and it's like, then they quit. And I'm like, yes. oh, that diet didn't work. No, you, you did it for three days. Totally. <laughs> and totally. so that's, that's super interesting. Okay. Final I, question. I think that, but the peer, one other thing I'll say yeah. about that is that I think that part of what's, what's interesting is the peer element behind it. Mm. And when you look at what they call the leaderboard, and so you see kind of, you know, how you're doing against everyone who's taken that class for all time, or everyone who's in that class with you now. And there's that, when it brings out that competitive side, it's like, oh, I'm going to get past that person. <laughs> Are you <laughs> <laughs> or I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat my personal best today. You know, it. it's just it just fires you up. And I think that there's so there's so much you can take from that with sales and how it oh, is that yeah. you kind of run sales in your organization and the firing That's up that that peer kind of element to it, inspiring people. That is great. I love that. All right, cool. Final question for you. You're the amazing stuff. So who are some people that inspire you? I mean, other than Alex on the Peloton, who are some people that inspire you to be better and how do they do that? So, you know, this is going to sound kind of cliche to say, Mm -hmm. um, but I got to say my kids, Mm, like when you think about kind of, you know, being they're they're big people now, you know, with with two in high school and one a tween, they're at their own kind of personalities and just thinking about like 
how it is that they make me think about the world that we're mm. creating now and the world that we're kind of creating in the future for them. And as they become adults, kind of how they're transitioning into that journey and what they're watching in terms of how, what I'm doing or what Mark's doing and, yeah. and just, you know, becoming that much more kind of cognizant of, of wanting to, you know, be mm. a better person for them and to have them kind of, you know, and have that, have them take kind of inspiration from that to how they think about kind of values and, and as they become an adult. Oh man, that's not clear. That's a great answer. It's, you know, I think it's, it is one of those lessons as a parent that you realize, you know, they don't always, it doesn't always seem that they listen to what you say, but they are always listening and watching on how you act and what, you know, what you say, totally. not to them, but just they, they watch how you behave. And that was as my oldest, you know, Skylar's 22 now. And I remember having that conversation and her kind of, you know, parroting back some of the things that she's, that I'd said to her or said over the course of time, I was like, Oh my God, I didn't realize she was actually listening. Totally. And having met your girls and kind of seeing Uh them interact with you guys, like I see it in terms of, you know, what they, what they've taken from you and whether that's Mm -hmm. mannerisms or whether it's, you know, their, their view on the world. And I just think it's uh, it just kind of makes you think about something beyond yourself. Oh man. That is great. That is super good. So thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time, Catherine. Uh, I know you are super busy being the commander and chief <laughs> of Common Skew. So uh, thanks for taking the time and good luck this afternoon um, rolling out the quarterly uh, announcements. I'm, I'm super pumped to hear about that. Do I get to ask you a question? You absolutely can ask me a question for sure. Okay. So I want to know, of all the learnings that you've had kind of in this past year of ups and downs and craziness mm-hmm. um, that have probably made you kind of think differently about, mm-hmm. you know, your work or your life or anything that what kind of of those learnings are you kind of carrying forward into the future? Hmm. So, okay. So I would say a couple things. Number one, um, I've actually said that, you know, while I am so, so, so excited to get back to in-person and live, that the ability to do this on a regular basis is, has been game-changing for me. The ability, um, I was, I was telling this example uh, yesterday that um, I had somebody who wanted me to come and do some training on some, how to do Facebook or whatever. And I said, and they were saying, how much will you charge me to do it? And I said, if you don't make me drive an hour and a half to see you <laughs> and we can do it on zoom, I'll do it for nothing. <laughs> and, yes. and I was able to, and I don't think they believed that I would be able to answer their questions or whatever. And we totally were. And I was able to do it in 25 minutes as opposed to three hours of just driving. And I totally. think in those moments, this technology will be uh, game changing. The other piece that popped into my head immediately is I'm, I'm working on a project now that has challenged my imposter syndrome bigger than anything I've, I've had in a long time. And the idea that in this you know, new world, and I actually mean before COVID, but really where we've been going is that we are, it's so important that we force ourselves past that that voice where we are uncomfortable and be willing to try new and different things because some of this stuff won't work and that's okay. And, but the, the iterating past the imposter syndrome, iterating past the voice in your head that tells you you're not good enough is more important now than ever. Yeah. And I think just see, it's so indicative of how adaptive, you know, all of us are. And yeah. when you do try those new things and they work, you're like, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I knew it all along. <laughs> well, that's cool. So, Catherine, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. As always, I always get a lot out of it and we'll have to do it again sometime. Okay. Uh, I'm honored to be asked. All right. Well, hey, well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.